Uh, for now, uh, we will continue with the next speaker, uh, which is my Mihail uh, Tarigraci from Rutgers. Uh, he will speak about classification of Grassmannian super varieties up to isomorphism. All right. Uh, thank you, Anders. Thank you, everyone, for the invitation to talk. Uh, yeah, so I will speak about the classification of Grassmannian Schubert varieties up to isomorphism. And I should preface this by saying that um, the work I present here is uh, in a joint paper with Wei Hong Shu. And yeah, let's get started. So, uh, as before, uh, my setup is a classical one. Um, I will consider the Grassmannian variety X, which I denote by GR M comma N of M dimensional subspaces of uh, CN. And my Schubert varieties are indexed by Young diagrams. Um, so I'll denote them lambda, and I'll require that they fit inside the rectangle with M rows and N minus M columns. Okay, so given this indexing, um, I ask a natural question. Uh, how does it influence the isomorphism of a class of X lambda? So is the Young diagram lambda a complete invariant of X lambda up to isomorphism? And I should say complete invariant. I mean, uh, if I pick another diagram, let's say mu, um, would I get something isomorphic? And if I do get something isomorphic, I want lambda to equal mu. OK, and this is not precise question. This is trivially false uh, for the following well-known facts. Um, first, I can extend my Grassmannian variety. Um, so if I take um, higher dimensional subspaces inside the higher dimensional uh, vector space, then uh, to the same Young diagram, I get isomorphic Schubert variety. Uh, the other fact is that if I transpose my Young diagram and it fits inside the rectangle, um, then I also get an isomorphic Schubert variety. And here I abuse the fact that I can extend my triangle uh, my rectangle as much as I want, uh, so I don't care about uh, bounding my Young diagram. Yeah, so with this, um, I update my question to, is the Young diagram uh, lambda up to a transpose a complete invariant of X lambda up to isomorphism? And we answer this question in the positive. So if uh, X and Y are Grassmannians, could be different, arbitrary. Um, if X lambda and Y mu are Schubert subvarieties, uh, which happen to be isomorphic, then lambda equals mu or lambda is mu transpose. All right, and uh, uh, most of our proof um, relies on the fact that uh, um, we want to look at properties of X lambda, um, which are intrinsically geometric, so they don't change up to isomorphism and then we can try to fish out combinatorial data out of it. Oh, and this theorem is uh, by myself and uh, Shu in uh, 2022. Okay, so my geometric invariants uh, start out with a dimension of X lambda, which is the size of lambda. Then I'll consider, in some cases, um, the ranks of the Chow groups, which in terms of lambda, uh, they correspond to the number of sub diagrams of a given size. And then the most amount of information I get from the reducible components of a singular locus of a, my Schubert sub variety. Uh, so, due to a theorem of Lakshmi Bai and Wyman, um, there's a precise description of these irreducible components, and they're given by um, Schubert varieties by removing outer rim hooks. So uh, looking at my lambda, I call this a rim hook. So removing it gives me lambda one. This is another rim hook, gives me lambda two, and lambda three comes from removing this third rim hook. OK, uh, yeah, so now I wish to translate these geometric invariants um, with 
Schubert subvarieties of X lambda uh, into something combinatorial, which tells me things about lambda. Uh, so I apply induction on the dimension uh, of my X lambda or on the size of lambda, which is the same, uh, to obtain these smaller Young diagrams from before up to a transposition. Um, because this is a statement of what I want to prove. Okay, then I, I also require an additional ingredient, uh, which is their intersection, um, which geometrically corresponds to the intersection of all the reducible components. And again, as before, due to induction, this is up to transpose. Okay. Um, it is of interest that I know which hook was removed first and which was removed last. So I wish to order the diagrams in such a way that I can tell which hooks were removed consecutively. So which hooks were adjacent. And geometrically, uh, this corresponds to uh, the Schubert variety of lambda i and Schubert variety of lambda j not being a proper intersection. So in my example, um, x lambda 1 and x lambda 2 um, don't have a proper intersection. And you can see their hooks are adjacent. They touch in this box. Um, same for lambda 2 and lambda 3. They should be touching this box. But this is false for lambda 1 and lambda 3. So at least I get some kind of ordering on my lambda i's. Um, I could get two of these in some sense, um, one ordering and it's reverse, but that won't make much of a difference going forward. OK, yeah, so to summarize my uh, combinatorial data, uh, given a Schubert variety x lambda, I look at its dimension their diagrams coming from its uh, singular locus and the special diagram lambda zero. And as an example, uh, if I were to look this particular Young diagram, I would get 27, these diagrams and lambda zero. Um, in some sense, um, I should not look at precisely this because I use induction. So transposes will be a factor. Um, so just to transpose and reorder randomly uh, to prove a point, I could also look at this data, which should be the same as this data. All right, so this is transposed and moved to the front. This is transposed and moved to the back. OK, uh, now with all my data, I want to do a reconstruction problem to obtain um, lambda or its transpose. So the main ingredient is the fact that um, lambda 0 is very close to lambda. Uh, lambda 0 being the, inter the intersection of irreducible components or by removing hooks. Um, is very close to lambda. So in this case, I just remove uh, these boxes. So I want to express this in terms of my previous data. And the way I do this is by counting how many rectangles were removed. And by a rectangle, I mean a maximal rectangle. I mean a subdiagram, uh, which is a rectangle and it happens to be maximal. So here, this is one, this is number one, and uh, this is my third uh, maximal rectangle. Okay, um, the fact is that the number of components I got before is one less than the number of rectangles. So here I'd get three, and here I have two components. Another fact is that uh, when I consider lambda zero, um, all the rectangles of width or height one disappear. 
So counting rectangles in lambda zero and looking at my previous count should give me a clue um, of what disappeared and what didn't. Okay, so in this case, um, I started out with three rectangles, which is two plus one. And here I have three in lambda zero. Um, so I had three initially, and none of them are width or height one, which actually translates to our case checking by uh, to a fact that we just add a rem of width one to obtain our lambda. Okay, uh, this is the simplest case. Um, uh, most of our cases go ad hoc, uh, just like this one. Um, to do a more complicated one, uh, just for a point, um, I consider a lambda with at least one rectangle of uh, width one. And in this case, computation say, um, so this is a three, so there are four rectangles inside lambda. Uh, lambda zero has three rectangles, therefore uh, I get for free that I have a rectangle of width one. And some more case checking uh, would say that to recover lambda, I need to union or to combine two of my irreducible components. So uh, here's where the ordering comes in. Uh, it's always the case that I have to pick the first and the last one. All right, so in this case, it's lambda one and lambda three. And since there's a transpose going on, um, I get two sometimes distinct cases uh, of a transposing lambda three or not. Um, but there should be only one compatible answer. And in this case, uh, we can read it off fair union. So lambda one and lambda three would give out lambda transpose, while transposing lambda three uh, would give something different from lambda and lambda transpose, also not compatible uh, with our previous data. Okay, um, the proof is more or less more case checking um, and so on. So I will skip that and instead focus on what kind of generalizations and similar work is being done. Um, okay, so in 2007, Devlin, Martin, and Reiner solved this problem for a class of smooth Schubert varieties in partial flag varieties. Uh, in 2020, Richmond and Slofstra solve a problem for complete flag varieties, uh, G mod B. Uh, in 2022, uh, myself and Shu solved this problem for Grassmannian varieties. And uh, in, it's a work in progress, but um, myself, Richmond, and Shu are solving a problem for communistical flag varieties. Um, now, I should say that um, indexing by Young diagrams is something um, very usual for Grassmannian varieties, uh, while it is not the case for, for example, complete flag varieties. So the combinatorial uh, invariants there are slightly different, and uh, it's the same case uh, for a first result for some partial flag varieties. Um, in our current work, uh, we are considering um, some posted structure, which uh, generalizes this Young diagram structure and we assign some labels. So in particular, we're looking at some order ideals and the posted structure kind of encapsulates both uh, information from the diagram, but also it's transpose. 
So it's a much cleaner argument um, than we have here, much less case checking and so on. Okay, uh, this is it from me. I think it's uh, about five minutes left for questions. Thank you. Thanks very much for a very nice talk. And yeah, we have time for a couple of questions.